and I go into this press ring thing at this premiere thing and this woman comes up and she goes oh you were brilliant in the film and then I'm sitting there thinking oh shit who does she think I was <laughs> and she went you must have got really fit to play one of those footballers did you and I went no I wasn't one of the footballers I was one of the um, the, the, the reporters the news reporters and she went this is no word of a lie she went oh <laughs> then, she walked, then she walked away from us and what I was a like, bitch. oh shit. Hi, it's Johnny from Isaac and we are back in the treehouse for another episode of Isaac Chats. And today guys, we are joined by one of my great friends and actor, Charlie Richmond. Hello, how are you? I'm not bad, how are you? <laughs> I'm alright, I just thought I'd say hello down there. Hello. Charlie Richmond. Thank you so much for coming down. My pleasure. It's absolutely lovely to have you here in the um, treehouse. Yes, it's new, but I can see its potential. Yeah, absolutely. It's fantastic. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> said the same thing. I can see the potential. Yeah, yeah. No, but I like it. It's it's what we call up in the northeast industrial chic. Industrial chic. Do you like that? I like that. You can have that. <laughs> <laughs> industrial chic. I yeah, love it. Love it. Just leave it. Leave it. Yeah, leave it as it is. Yeah. Um, I wanted to get you on sofa, Charlie. Really, it's all about talking about you know, your creative process a little bit and why you do this, that's what I think I'm interested in. Mainly like, what, that's what I mean. It's like it's a very, very strange, it's a strange thing for people to do really, isn't mm. it? Well, at the moment, I'm not doing it for the money, um, but then every actor's gonna say that until you yep. land your next big job, you know, your, your soap or your a feature film, that type of thing, or a nice large commercial. Um, I suppose why I'm doing it is for, for, the, for the love of it. Um, and I feel very lucky that I can pursue a career doing w- what I class as a hobby. Yeah. Um, and I suppose that's why why I do it. it and I'm very lucky to follow that vocation. Um, but yeah, it's it's the hardest part is, is the survival, is, yeah. is paying the mortgage every month, paying your bills. So I suppose you've got to have some sort of fallback plan, you know, yeah. or, or another string to your bow where you can make some money. What other string balls have, what other strings to your bow have you got? Well, um, recently I've just launched my own new production company. Yes. And I've just produced a play up in the northeast, and then we took it down to Ipswich, a play called Bobby Robson Saved My Life. As it turns out, the play didn't make any money, um, and I've been working on it a long time, but that was... That was an experience where it, it's going to get better. Yeah. The production company is going to get better. Before that, I DJ'd for many, many years. Um, nightclubs all over, all over the country, all over the. Um, I went to um, Mallorca for a couple of years and DJ'd in Magaluf. Um, so I've always had other strings to the bow that I could fall back on. But I've done everything, and I think that's that's the important thing. You you cannot be too proud. I've done everything from working on scrap vans and rubbish vans, working for people on a day rate, to um, to working for finance companies and things like that. So I've done all sorts of stuff to to try and make a, a little bit of bread and butter. And in between that, I've um, I've managed to sort of keep my twenty year career going. You yeah, know? that's it. It's a funny thing, isn't it? Like when we when we kind of like. Um from the outside looking in on this profession, it's that whole thing of like when people are going to classes and all that, like they'll straight look at Corey or whatever and just be like, I want to do that. Oh, right. And it's often kind of like it's taken away the whole working, jobbing actor kind of well, thing. Well, I've still got my mum that'll say to me, Oh, you'd be great in that, son. You'd be, oh, get yourself into Emmerdale, get yourself into Corey. Like you can just go and apply for <laughs> just that knock, job. Yeah, just knock um, on door. Which is, which is, bless them. I, I mean, they mean well, but. You and I both know that the uh, the difficulty it is to, to be seen, to be to, to get your foot in the door. And then uh, again, in 20 years, 20 years plus now, I've been very lucky that I've had some high profile jobs. But the thing is, th- th- they're not sustainable. They you come know, and go. They come and go. And you'll know that yeah, yourself. Yeah. But yeah, f- from a, from an outside point of view, it, it looks easy. And, and everybody thinks, oh, you must be minted. You're working and this, that and the other. But... Now the reality of it is, it 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 can be a very very difficult career to go into performing arts, acting, producing, directing, unless you've a got a little bit of success and b a hell of a lot of determination. Because I think you have to be strong willed yeah. to keep going at this. Yeah. Absolutely. There's 95 percent bad times and five percent amazing. Absolutely. But then I brought my wife with us today, Claire, and I think you need a good support network yeah. around you. And I'm very lucky that I've got that. Um, we were just talking about that on the way down that you know we 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 need each other I need her that the months that I haven't got any work at all and she keeps the bills going and keeps yeah. the house going 
and then there's other months I'll make in one day what she'll make in a year yeah you know and it's crazy and you go how is that even possible mm. but we've been there you know and it um, justifies it as well doesn't it like you say like you'll pick up that check for working two days and you'll be like wow but then you might not work for 18 months and that's it and yeah. then that money all of a sudden it's not a lot yeah so my accountant will say to me things like put put some money away for your tax and I'm like well I can't I need that money now to spend to keep the bills going and I'll worry about the tax later yeah. Fortunately, for the past 11 years, I've had a contract at the Time Theatre doing pantomime. So I've always, I always know I've got my end of year tax bill coming because yeah, yeah. I know my wages are coming in. If I didn't have that, I think things, I think things would be very different. I think I would be actually considering chucking it in because it's just too difficult yeah. to survive. It is. it is. I think it's so honest to you to say it is like, I mean, I still struggle today, like well struggle. Mm -hmm. Like, do you know what I mean? Like month to month, it's like all these bills are coming in. And you're thinking, I love what I do, but shit, someone's got to give. The hardest part is seeing all your mates that you're in and around and then they pop up in the next thing. So a pal of mine, Davey Nellist, um, lovely, lovely lad. And, and we worked together late 2017 and um, he was struggling. He'd just come off a couple of plays. And he's just landed a lovely role in a TV series, new t detective drama on ITV. And that's, you know, it's that age old thing. It pulls them right back out yeah. of it again. And, um, and and I think that that's that's the nature of the business. You need to be in it to win it. And if you're not in it, then, you know, you, you're going to struggle. Mm. You, you really are going to struggle. Mm. But, you know, I still go for auditions. I'm, I'm up and down to London a few, few times, sometimes often twice and three times a month. Uh, up and down to Manchester for castings and stuff, but yeah, you, you've got to put your face out there. But then, you know, I've had some frustrating things this year. I've been pencil heavily penciled for jo that's the worst. Well, maybe, worst Natalie words. Gavin's just been here and she was saying like, "What the fuck does that even mean?" What does it? A heavy pencil to me used to mean you've pretty much got this. Yeah, well, basically we're just we're just figuring waiting out on the, the client logistics. going. Yes, it's the logistics. He's heavily yeah. penciled. You know, you get a light pencil, put his name down. He's in the running. A heavy pencil was you've got this job. So I went for a commercial for Subway, and uh, I was a heavy pencil, and they cancelled me like literally two days before the job, oh, fuck off. and let me let me off the let me off the um, pencil. No, that was two, I was on that pencil for two weeks. That's two weeks my agent had stopped sending me for jobs. Yeah, you know, in case it comes off, and it you know. But that's this is the thing they never teach the kids at college either about rejection. Yeah, how you pick yourself up? How many times have, have I had the knockback? And I've had jobs in front of me. I had a job once, right? It was a feature film. It was called In for a Penny. Warner Brothers were producing it. Nine million pound film. I was cast alongside Chris Connell, who you met yet yeah. a long time ago. Um, Nick Moran, um, uh, Sid Owen from EastEnders, and um, Jimmy Fury from East is East. There was five who were casting it. It was going to be shooting here in the UK, and you it was in the Northeast, and then across to Vegas. Wow. Right? I was with Sam Claypool at the time. It was a long, long time ago. And she's come up. We've popped the champagne. We've started celebrating. This is a 30, 40 grand job 20 years ago, nearly now. And you're thinking, oh, this is it. I've made it. This is my big break. And then the the shoot date got put back, and they were like, "Don't worry, it's going to be we're going to shoot before December." Then it got to December. Oh, the director can't shoot over the Christmas. It'll go to the turn of the year. Got to the turn of the year, money's been pulled out the job, and you think to yourself, "Oh no, that's it, gone." And that massive carrot cake that was dangled in front of you, I'd spent that 30, 40 grand five times <laughs> over in the end. Yeah, that's what you do, though. But that's... nobody teaches you how to pull yourself back from, yeah. the, from, from the rejection. Yeah. We were talking about um, the other week we had somebody in, uh, Yasmin Tahiri, who's just graduated from RADA. Oh, nice. And it took her five years of auditioning yeah. to get there. Yeah. And we were saying that that process almost taught her as a byproduct of rejection. There you go. I mean, my wife that I brought today, Claire, she trained as an actress, exactly the same time as me, musical theatre, um, got tired of the door getting shut in her face and um, is now a lawyer. Yeah. So the, the top and bottom of it is some people stick it out and I've, I've, I've only been able to stick it out A, because I had a DJ company and I had um, a various venues across the country that allowed me to have spare money. So once I had, once my income was sorted, I was able to then keep chasing the dream. Mm. And then also through the success of picking up one or two high profile jobs across the years, that keeps you going as well. Um, 
but yeah, my business partner Steve, his daughter has gone off to um, MTA, and it's costing him nigh on a hundred grand to put her through a two-year course in London. That's some fees and the accommodation and all that type of thing. And there's no guarantees. There's no guarantee she's going to walk out of that drama school and walk into work. Yeah. Um, but the, you know, they sat down with me late, like early last year, and, and asked me for my advice. They were going. To, she was going to go to like Gateshead College mm. and do performing arts. And I just sort of said, well, why are you doing that? Because in my opinion, I didn't train in London. I trained in the Northeast. I went to a local college then to university. But I believe that if you come out of a top drama school in London, you're at least a couple of rungs up the ladder higher yeah. than somebody walking out of a college. Only reason I'm saying that is because when you come to do your end of year shows, there's an agent in there watching you or there's a couple of casting directors watching you or even your lecturers themselves are friends of people in the industry yeah, yeah. who are going, you know, I've just had a lad, Johnny Dixie's come through, have a look at Johnny, look at this, look at that. And then people are talking about you already in the hub, i.e. London, where you need to be. Um, and, and I think I think you can come out a little bit higher up the ladder. Mm. Um, so that was my, my recommendation to, to, to Steve and Caitlin, my business partner's daughter, was to go to London come out with the best possible opportunity get the best possible training you can and then at least from that point onwards you, you can you, you can decide if it's for you give it five years of your life you yeah. know give it 10 years of your life um it's always something i'm a big believer in acting this is something you can come back to i've gone through sort of different periods of my life where i've been ideal for the boy next door then i play the brother roles now the hair i've got these arctic blonde highlights you probably can't tell under these subtle lights um <laughs> that i'm going gray now so i'm now playing dad character it's great but yeah. i'm reading breakdowns that are saying 40 to 50 years old i'm only 38 but i'm looking thinking Fair enough, I'll play a dad. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And that's a good thing because that means your career has got a new life. It's got yeah, a new... Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. You've got a new tint to what you do. More opportunity. Yeah. So, yeah, it's something that these kids can go to drama school, pack it in for 20 years and go back to, you know? Yeah. They've got the skill. And also, let's not let's not beat around the bush. Performing arts gives you life skills. Yes. It gives you the ability to walk into a room and adapt as part of a team, be working as, as part of a team, communicate effectively, listen effectively. If you can't do any of them things, I'd get out of drama or, or performing arts anyway because you need to be the, the basic, you need to be yeah, working as basics. part of an ensemble. Uh -huh. You need to be able to take direction. They're the, the absolute basics, you know. Mm. So it's good skills to have, but definitely, I, I, you know, I don't want to make this um, sort of morbidly. You need a fallback plan, but. It would be wise, even if that was, if you can play music and you can busk a few gigs at the weekend, if you're a photographer, you can take a few headshots, that type of thing. You need something yeah. to fall back on. Absolutely, absolutely. Right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, left, turn, right, dress, eyes, right. order. I can tell some of you have done this before. Aye, 25 years ago. It's bloody boring then and all. Well, some of it was almost average. I want to go back to um, probably a really important thing that you mentioned about that support system, that support mm. network. I think, especially for people who are just getting into this, I think parents is a strong role. Are your parents really supportive in what you do? Absolutely. I mean, I lost my dad when I was 18 year old, but up until that point, he just loved the fact that I was performing. My mum throughout, she's my biggest fan. She calls herself my manager, you know. She's like, <laughs> but she, she's hopeless because I'd have to tell her like a thousand times who I'm working with and she still won't listen. Now she just starts writing people's names down. Um, Claire and, and my mum were at, a, um, we had her at a VIP premiere of the play that I was at, um, that I performed in recently. And the, we had invited some celebrities down, some footballers and stuff, and uh, like the news anchors from the local ITV and BBC News and that were there. And my mum's sitting not this far away from them going, eee, that's that bloke off the news. <laughs> I'm thinking, oh my God, mum, what are you doing? Um, mortifying. But yeah, they've always been a big support. And I think that's important, you know, um, whether it's your your, your, um, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your fiance, your wife, your, your parents, to, to keep you going, you know, and to keep keep your chin up when the knockbacks yeah. happen. Because it's easy to feel sorry for yourself. 
Oh, like, dead easy. Do you know what I mean? It's so easy to, especially, especially when you get these little dangling carrots, pencils, heavy pencils, recalls. You you're investing sometimes 150 quid to get down to a meeting that you're in there for 10 minutes already. The weight is on you that shouldn't be for an interview. I don't know about you though, kids today want instant fame yeah and, and this is partly to do with reality tv shows and reality talent competitions and i'm, I, I'm i've never been a big fan of them and I, but i don't want to knock them at the same time but you, you like see your x factors and your britain's got talent and all these type of things they give you instant stardom but that that's five minutes of fame and then when that's over with what happens next how do you keep riding that wave this is why you've got to train you've got to hone your skills um, you've got to have that support network around you to, to keep you going and keep you interested in it. And, and I mean, that's where it's at, you know, to go for an audition, to get a little way down the sort of rabbit hole thinking I've got this job and then to have either a knockback, you've got to pick yourself back up from that. Or if you get the job, you've then got to have somebody to go, brilliant, now keep, you see, now keep going, keep, or keep yeah. going or keep your feet on the ground. Yeah. Because my pals, you see, the thing is with me, I was born in a council estate up in Newcastle and I would never have, my mates would never have let me get too big for me boots. Yeah. You know, if I was walking around going, that's me in that telly there, or that's me on that billboard over there, my mates would pull you pull right, you back, right down. back down again. See, I mate, wind your neck in, will you? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and the, I mean, I did it, I, I was in a musical last year, and I remember the BBC came in and they, they, they recorded me um, doing some of the scenes and Sting was there and this, that and the other. And now I had an old pair of Adidas tracksuit bottoms on that I've had for donkey's years, but I'm in a rehearsal studio, not too dissimilar to this. It was probably a little bit dirtier than this actually. Um, <laughs> and um, there I am in these Adidas tracksuit bottoms. So my mates don't text me and go, oh mate, congratulations. I saw you on the news last night. That's brilliant news. What my mates do is go, you still wearing them tracksuit bottoms, you scruffy tramp? <laughs> <laughs> you not bought yourself another pair of tracksuit bottoms yet? And I'm thinking, thanks lads. Yeah. But it's it's people like that that I think you need around you. They be, they form part of your support network yeah, and yeah. keep you grounded, you yeah. know? They're all a product to your product to yourself right? you're a product to your environment like exactly. you say if you're exactly. around people that are going to put you on a pedestal you put yourself on that pedestal if you start believing in your own hype I did pantomime with somebody that I, I will remain nameless but she knows who she is she's <laughs> had five minutes worth of fame and um, it's gone to her head and then she did pantomime and then she let the entire company down and uh, she went off on the sick and played this whole diva card and do you know what it is it's it, that's a product of, of, of the industry allowing her to, to believe in her own hype, think she's bigger than better than she is, and then when you come into the professional environment and there's an entire ensemble of people and an entire production company that sold that pantomime out all year based on the fact you're in it and want you just to do a job. That's all you're there yeah. to do is a job. They're not asking you to go above and beyond. They just want you to be professional. And they can't do that this is why that five minutes of fame doesn't wash yeah, with me. Absolutely, so I yeah. went back to the producers of our pantomime and I just said, do me a favor, get me 50 local lasses, get me any musical theater lass that's ever worked in the West End and done eight shows a week. Cause they've stood the test of time. Yeah. They know what, what's expected of them and they're not going to let you down. Mm. Um, and therefore the, the, the production will, it'll keep going. Cause I, I, I really haven't got the time of day for people that aren't professional because yeah. that's the thing you can train in this industry. But there's 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 a respect in the industry, respecting the job, respecting your fellow players. You know, you cannot have an ego. No. You cannot ha you cannot have attitude problems and all this type of thing. It just doesn't wash. You you might work there and then in that job. I would never work with you again. Yeah. 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 And, and, yeah. and, and that job's over like that. <clears throat> And then the director doesn't like you again because you've you, and people you've, talk. It's a smaller no, industry than you think. It's a very small yeah. industry. And if you've got an attitude and, and you think you're bigger than than, than the production or you, you're believing in your own hype and ego, you, sh you sharp get caught out, yeah. you know? And that's why a lot of these celebrities, <coughs> excuse me, a lot of these celebrities that I've met and worked with now, their egos, once you get a few celebrities in a room, their egos kind of cancel each other out. Yeah. <laughs> because they've got nothing, they've, they've got no reason to, to, to sit there and think, oh, I'm top of the tree. Oh, there's somebody else top of the tree. And the, you know, they're so before you know it, they're now, the, the old sort of drop the chip off the shoulder, muscle in, get the job done, and, and that's it, you know? And, mm. and, and that's been my experience with it. But anybody that's ever had ego or, or had, um, you know, delusions of grandeur, what have you, 
they've, they've stood out like a sore thumb yeah. in the field, unfortunately. Yeah. You know? I think it's so important that this is, like you say, like the entire industry is it's an ensemble effort. Like TV or theatre, it's that whole thing that it doesn't matter how fucking good you are. Mm-hmm. If somebody's going to edit you like dog shit or oh, man, film you out on. of focus Go or... On don't get your sound right or whatever it is yeah. a star looks like an amateur they do and you, you're a product of every and that's why it's I, I always say it's alchemy this yeah. business is alchemy yeah. the, the best jobs it's where everybody has, like script story performance crew everything just comes together perfectly and it all clicks and all you need is one of those cogs not working quite right and the entire and the, fucking the thing, thing buckles it does and you're dead right. And I've made the cutting room floor. I remember going to a premiere once, again, many, many years ago. And I'd, I'd shot um, a film called Ghoul. There was three of them, Ghoul I 1, remember, 2, and yeah, 3. Yeah. I was in Ghoul 2. And I played a news report. And I shot. I had two days on this film, but several scenes, plenty of dialogue, lots of interviews at the football match afterwards with the players and the manager. A couple of interviews outside the ground, a couple of interviews down at, at an airport as, as one of the players was arriving back. Went to this premiere, red carpet, the whole shebang. On comes the scene, and it was on and off like that. And I went, oh, is that it? <laughs> and I thought, oh, no. And then the story skips on. I thought, well, I definitely know they're not going backwards. So I'm sort of sitting there in this, in this theatre going, oh, God. I, I, I literally do not come back on screen again now. That was absolutely it. And it was like I was on and off in about three seconds no dialogue whatsoever fantastic because i've already been paid for it but that 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 but still, of, yeah. so i come out and i go into this press ring thing at this premiere thing and this woman comes up and she goes oh you were brilliant in the film and then i'm sitting there thinking oh shit who does she think i was <laughs> and she went you must have got really fit to play one of those footballers did you and i went no i wasn't one of the footballers i was one of the um the the, the reporters the news reporters and she went this is no word of a lie she went Oh. <laughs> 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 then she walked away from us and I was like, bitch. oh shit and uh, I just kind of grabbed Sam Claypool at the time and I just went Sam come and go because I was mortified yeah, I, I was want to like, go home and cry I, I was like oh no and I told everybody I'm in this new <laughs> film coming out can't see this film and then after that they were like what was it like I was like didn't go and see it I, I was in it for my my name goes up four times longer than I was on the screen <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so, what an harsh, uh, harsh business, isn't it? Oh, mate, you, uh, honestly, we must love it. Yeah, well, that's well. I, I want to get onto a few of the good times. Oh, Let's definitely. talk about the good times. Like, um, you've done some great jobs. Um, come on, talk me through some of your favourites. <clears throat> right, well, I trained in musical theatre. So the highlight of my entire career was last year, I got to perform in um, Sting's musical, The Last Ship. Um, which is about the Wall's End shipyards, and I played a character called Adrian Sanderson. We took it on a UK and Ireland tour. I got to perform doing what I always wanted to do, performing a musical. Um, That, for me, and also because I'd been on the journey with The Last Ship since its concept in 2011-12, it meant the absolute world to me. I was with Sting and... uh, Jimmy Neal, Rob Mathis, some of the biggest, biggest sort of musical theatre stars in the world were, were, were sort of invested in bringing this piece together over eight years, and then we got a chance to perform it. Wow. So I would say that was one of my biggest achievements and, and most enjoyable shows emotionally. Um, How long was that run for? It ran for six months, but again, I've been involved with it for eight yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. So that, without a shadow of a doubt, one of my probably most proudest moments. Um, but then in terms of jobs, I mean, I've done everything from Emma Dale, George Gently, Vera, done loads of telly and stuff, which are great, but they're normally one, two days on something, you know, or three, four weeks on something mm. is in a drama side of things. I think I'm best known for my commercials. I had a, I had a great spell between 2011, 2013, 14, where I was the face of Pot Noodle for a good number of years. Come come turn me telly on without seeing you in a Pot Noodle. I played Brian the Wag. Fantastic company in London called Mother, who are responsible for a lot of um, really, really funny commercials, ideas for commercials. And they come up with this concept that this man is so lazy, he can't be bothered to go and get a normal job, so he becomes a footballer's (laughs) wife. Dresses up as a woman. He's got a full beard and everything, but dresses up as a woman to pretend that he's a, uh, a wag and all he does is eat pot noodles all day 
fantastic concept. Why try harder was their slogan. Pot noodle, why try harder? Then putting water in in, in that they are. That's that's the concept. So I shot um, three adverts for pot noodle, um, and then off the back of that, the same production company cast me in a money supermarket advert, which we shot in Los Angeles. Wow. Um, and again, just just experiences like put me up in a suite at the uh, at the Viceroy at Santa Monica and flying me first class to Los Angeles. I mean, Hello. as a council lad from from <laughs> yeah. Tyneside, you know, I, I've seen people go on the plane and turn left. It, it had never been me before. I was always turn right and keep going to the back. Ever since I was little, I've always dreamed of living an easy life. So, I married a footballer. Been a wag for two years now. I'm a real lady of leisure. My day starts with a swim, maybe a spray tan, I do a bit of aerobics, blow dry, I have a nice long soak, I doll myself up, then I'll invite the girls round. Life's a doddle. Well, I'm, I'm quite lucky, I haven't had to do all sort of acting roles, so to speak. I do a lot of drama based training. So I, I was very lucky about 10, 12 years ago to get a job for a company called Juice. And um, what Juice did is they, they, use, um, they use drama to teach health and safety. So um, we would, I, I'll never forget my first job. So you, you're given a mountain of information about oil and gas, about all these rigs and this is what happens and this is the process and that. And then we, they created a piece of drama around a lifting operation. So it's a big crane on an oil rig and they're bringing over some pipes and it, it, there's, a, there's a point of impact where there's an accident about to happen. And then they would stop the drama there and then they'd hand the control back over to the room nice. and get the, the guys in the room who are the real experts who work on the platforms to prevent this accident from happening. It's that interactive experience. So it's that interactive drama, yeah. yeah. So 12 years ago, I got my first um, little little taste of that. Since then, I've got a mount, I've got all my offshore tickets, all my survival tickets. So I fly in the helicopters and all that type of thing. I've been offshore and done one-on-one -on -one coaching. I've got mountains and mountains of information in my head. I've worked with a fire brigade. I've worked with uh, trainee lawyers. I've worked with a police force. I've worked with all these different areas of, 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 of the world basically uh, of, of different different industries different um, cultures where I've learned a little bit of a, about everything really and that's all sort of added to things I know but uh, you know uh, again it's it, it all boils back down to being a drama job yeah, you know the driving I mean? force has been performance it's always been performance but fascinatingly where they where normally a, a business a bank or something like that would do a death by PowerPoint presentation we would go in with a team of actors and we would bring that presentation to life so that the people in the room go, bloody hell, I, I didn't realise that. Because the thing is, there's a, you know Darren Brown, don't you? Yeah. So he works on brain psychology and the human brain can only process seven plus or minus two pieces of information at any one time. Uh, anything more than it's like that old that old um, game show, you know, where the conveyor belts going along. Yeah, oh, and what you, was that called? What that's going to annoy me. With cuddly um, to a cuddly, cuddly toy. toy. You know, a toy. A generation game. Generation game. Boom. So exactly like that. As that's going along, you're remembering them, but you might get uh, like seven, eight pieces of information. You've remembered the first eight items, and then the next one comes out, and as you're looking at it, you, they don't drop off in that order. But you might have just deleted one, yeah. a pen, or something along the way. Um, and, and it's the same for the human brain. So when these banks and these corporations and these oil and gas companies are doing training with people and they're putting up these pre PowerPoint presentations, it's got lovely colours, pictures, graphs on, statistics, how well we're doing, how well we're underachieving, all these type of things. They've bamboozled everybody within five minutes, you see. And now everybody's sitting there going... Just numb with I've information. Got, I've got another four hours of this course to do and I'm numb, I'm done. This is where the drama-based yeah. training comes in. So we come in and we reenact a little scene for you or we play a few games with you, exactly like you would in a drama game. You know, pass the ball around, don't let the ball yeah, drop, yeah, all yeah. these type of things. However, each one of them has a learning outcome yeah. that you can apply back to something. And, and so through the drama-based training, I've had a lot of fun, a lot of experience with that. Um, that sort of gives us a, a little bit of a fallback, bread and butter-wise yeah. as well. That's been quite good. Um, it's amazing right. how much you can apply performance to, isn't it? Oh, like, absolutely. In, in any industry, it's kind of like you say, especially in a training aspect. People well, I've, had, just... I've had people come up to me that, that, are, that, that are saying to us, oh, you know, I've got a conference next week and I've got to stand up and I've got to do a speech 
or a best man speech i can't tell you how many best men speeches i've helped other people write um word i learned for it is called glossophobia what, glossophobia is a fear of public speaking there you go. and over 40 percent of the nation uh, suffer, suffer from it, it. Yeah. yet we do it on a day and take it for granted yeah and that's the thing i mean i i, I can't I can't instill confidence in somebody, but I can give them the tools that they need yeah. to, to have that confidence, yeah. or to draw upon what they need to do and how to stay mm. focused. Charlie, you've been amazing. Mate, it's a pleasure. Anytime. It's been a lovely, lovely Anytime. conversation. I think, again, this is all about kind of being honest, talking about the rough, the smooth, and kind of like just painting it for what it is, I think. Mate, we know, and anybody else out there knows, if you can do this as a career, if you love to perform, if you love to sing, play music, act, television direct edit paint pictures whatever your artistic uh, direction is i say do it follow your dreams chase those dreams have aspirations have confidence go for it give yourself the best opportunity in life by having something to fall back on another talent another job accountancy something to, to so that it, it'll allow you to um keep going in the way you yeah. want to go um pick yourself up when, when you're your on rock bottom, have confidence to bounce back. Think, use your network around you, use the people around you. Like keep your support that's, network yeah. together. Love your family and friends. Stay grounded when you have the success. Stay grounded. Remember where you come from. Remember your roots. And seek advice, you know. There's plenty of other people out there who's been and done it. Speak to your accountants, speak to your friends, speak to your tutors, speak to whoever. You know, if you ever need advice, never ever go down that, that, that route of you think you know best because yeah, you're still learning now like you were just saying I don't then, think the it's a single yeah. day where not a day that I you don't, don't learn yeah. something new whether that's a corporate job whether it's an acting job whether I'm on TV you know, the constantly changing camera lenses different things I just did a film last year with uh, Ken Loach I saw this so I saw it last night it's coming out it's coming out um, it'll be at the cinemas this year it done really really well at Cannes Film called? Festival it's called Sorry We Missed You that's the one and again, Ken Loach is unique. So on a set, you and I would know this, they normally control the sound. They want everything quiet so they can, so they can get the dialogue in clean and then they can put other noises in behind in post. Not, Not Ken. He didn't like to rehearse, so we didn't have a script. Nobody had a full script in advance. You were sent your sides the night before. He wants everything raw. He wants everything improvised and, and feeling as natural as it possibly can be. Um, which is terrifying yeah. to an actor. So I learned working with Ken Loach this year that to be sometimes you can be over prepared for stuff. Mm. You can overthink something. Um, yeah. So I'm constantly learning and evolving within the industry, and in you in your pick up new techniques with every different person you work with, and that's a great thing. Be be an open book. Be 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 a sponge ready to absorb everything yeah. because that's the thing you will learn from all these different people you work with, different techniques. Even if it's a vocal technique, um, to warm your voice up because that's another thing. This is what bread and butter. This, that is as well. That's going to get you the job. <laughs> yeah. But you don't always have to be beautiful. Yeah. You know, I get cast in the. I read these castings. Must be chubby. Must be the guy next door. You know what I mean? So that's my type of job. Yeah, yeah. Now it's 40 to 50 with grey hair. You know what I mean? <laughs> these are the jobs I'm getting sent for. Um, but again, things like, you know, looking after yourself, staying healthy, you know, keeping keeping water going in, resting your voice, making sure you warm your voice up, cool it down, things like that. These are all techniques that throughout, throughout time I've sort of picked up that I think if I'm in a show or a play for any length of time I need to look after myself yeah. you know so that you stay fit enough to co to complete the project mm. otherwise you start letting people down yeah so all that advice and if ever you need to talk to us again just just invite us back down I'm here I love it Boom. I love it well might get you in to sing a song and all mate oh mate let's do it do it you might have to tidy up before the next time I come back don't worry it'll be tidy I promise you I love it though <laughs> what's it called industrial shabby chic Industrial Shabby She. Love it, yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll sing a song next time. Spot on. Charlie, you've been amazing. Johnny boy. Much Always love. Always pleasure. Ooh. And that's about it for another episode of Isaac Chats. If you want to check out more episodes like this, just head over to www.isaacwho.com. But from me and Charlie, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.